Joining us now is Oji Okpe with stories trending around the world. Hello, Ojinika. Good morning, Dr. Bati. Okay, it's time for I you to take charge. I love that you always use all my names. You Oji, take charge. As always. <laughs> Good morning Good to morning. you. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good, thank you. Good morning, Rafai. How are you? Good morning, Oji. How are you? Good, thank you. Very well. Thank great. Well, good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United Kingdom, the police have launched a desperate search for a 19-year-old Nigerian student of Oxford Brookes University, Richard Okogrie, who's been missing for more than a week. And the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, has rejected Harry and Meghan's secret wedding claims. The Archbishop says the Duke and Duchess were legally married the day millions of people watched at St. George's Chapel. In the United States, former U.S. President Donald Trump is back online after launching his official website of the 45th president following his controversial ban from social media in the aftermath of the January Capitol insurrection. In Iraq, a group of women have taken the risky task of demining the city of Basra, defying gender norms and attempting to clear the area of landmines and other explosives left after the war. In Nigeria, photos and videos of an all-female mechanic workshop where women are changing the narrative and gender roles are reversed in Sokoto State have made the rounds. Finally, under entertainment, 20 young designers across the globe, including Nigerian designer Lagos State Program's Adeju Thompson, have made the semi-finals list of the 2021 LVMH Prize. And Nigerian Grammy Award winner Berna Boy has been nominated for the 2021 Brits Awards under the International Male Solo Artist category, making it the second consecutive time the musician will be nominated for the Brits Awards. I don't charge my energy, I don't get stand for no enemy. Do this pay one day. Tundra, I saw you clapping. Yes, Brenner yeah. Boy is on a roll. <laughs> he is on yes. a roll. I love him. And our Nigerian designer, too. I have Fantastic. my fingers crossed for both of yes, them. Yes, the LVMH amazing. Prize is, is a very big deal. Big deal. Yeah. A lot of money, too. Mm -hmm. Great establishment for both of them. All right. Well, let's begin what's trending in Nigeria. Pastor Chris Oyakilume, owner of the religious channel Love World Television Network, has generated mixed reactions on social media after his channel was sanctioned with a fine of £125,000 for exposing viewers to inaccurate and potentially harmful claims about COVID-19. The Office of Communications in the United Kingdom, better known as Ofcom, released a statement regarding the sanction on Wednesday, stating that it was the second time in a year that the television network would breach the rules on accuracy in news and harm in its coverage of the coronavirus. Over the weekend, a video of the pastor's sermon in which he slammed Christian leaders who were endorsing the COVID-19 vaccine went viral. In the video, Pastor Chris questioned their faith, claiming that the children of God were more powerful than the vaccine. Rufai, I mean, <laughs> this is such a huge amount of money. I mean, in Naira, it's like 60, 64 oh, million, about. I mean, you know, in May last year, the pastor's channel was also sanctioned and the, you know they talked about the fact linking the uh, 5g to you know the covid 19 virus they also asked him to um you know reveal any type of evidence that he had uh to 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 back his claim on those findings um <clears throat> I, I mean i don't know what's what's well, happening this is, what this, this is what is going to happen he's going to react to ofcom uh and he's going to pay probably pay the fine or if he doesn't get a waiver from off by ofcom he'll pay the fine uh, because he needs that platform to be able to go on and he needs it to be able to spread his own message. You know, you have a right to spread your own message, but there's also a duty of care in media. You can't come out there and spread things that are falsehood, that are not backed up. And I keep insisting that narrative he's spreading is by American televangelists, is by a conspiracy theorists. These are the kind of things you hear on Infowars. So Infowars run by, I forget the guy's name now in America, has been a conspiracy theory website. He has challenged everything, constantly sped, spread misinformation over the years, and that's what they do best. But for me, the sad part is, 
we need everybody on board in the fight against COVID-19. Isn't it funny that this has taken our lives away? I'm not saying don't have your faith. You can have your faith, but this is science, and it's clear on the ground. There's COVID-19, there's a vaccination to help, and we should take all the steps necessary. It's not a thing of faith. Other pastors have come out too to say, take the vaccine, so let's follow the science on ground. Because you see, one of the biggest takeoffs from the war against COVID-19 is, uh, is the misinformation, the infodemics that is destroying the fight against COVID-19. And I'm sad that we're having people talk down like this on the vaccine when another pandemic might be starting anytime soon. You don't even know. Diseases are, are let loose. They're on the loose. It will happen. So if we can't come together as a world and speak with one voice and say vaccine is the solution, then what's the way forward? But we've seen the empirical proof in the UK, for instance. See the way lockdown was limited in the UK because of vaccination. See Israel. People can go back to their life. Those are the facts on ground. Dear Pastor Chris, nobody's distorting the facts. Nobody's talking about your faith. But we need to find a solution to COVID-19, and that's the vaccine. Yes. Please, tell your congregation that. I beg you. Okay. I beg you. Nobody's saying don't have faith. But this is science. We need works to be able to show for it that we can solve a problem. The scientists too, they are not pagans. They believe in Jesus Christ just like you believe in Jesus Christ. And the Bible says faith without works is dead. So I have faith that I wouldn't catch COVID or when I catch COVID I'll survive. But I have to go to the hospital to be treated for it or take a vaccine. Faith without works is dead. Thanks, Rafai. Dr. Bati, your yes. take on the story. You recall that in April 2020, um, uh, Pastor Chris Oyakilome had this program. 29-hour, you know, prayer uh, program uh, in the course of which he came up with this conspiracy theory linking COVID-19 to 5G. Yeah, that's what I just said, yeah. Now, he did that, and we reviewed it on this program, and we accused him of ignorance. And we talked about the responsibility of pastors who are in a position of power, who stand behind the pulpit, and the need for persons in position of leadership not to abuse the power that they have to address other people. We made a third point, that people, the congregation should beware. The fact that a man is a pastor, Pentecostal or of another variety, uh, does not mean that he's knowledgeable. And we advise Pastor Chris Ohakilome to focus on his area of competence, which is the interpretation of the Bible and leading the congregation. But making ignorant comments, about uh, you know, a scientific matter like the COVID-19, like the pandemic, we condemned it. Now, at that time, a month later, Ofcom, the Office of Communications in the UK, where he also has that, his Love World uh, television network owned by the Christ Embassy, now asked the uh, channel to retract the report. They wanted them to correct the report because the position of Ofcom is that the allegations were unsubstantiated they were inaccurate, and more importantly, those allegations posed a threat to public health. You have a right to have your own prejudices, but you don't have the right to endanger other people's lives. Because Ofcom then said, look, we are not against controversy, we are not against people holding views, but you have no right to endanger the lives of your, of your viewers. Now, the, the big issue is that Pastor Chris Oyakilome has consistently repeated the offense. And I think it is a good thing that Ofcom in this instance has had to put his feet down. £125,000, fine. Yes, he has the option of seeking a legal uh, representation uh, to see how he can uh, get out of it, but the point has been made. Now, he repeated the offence in the face of the vaccine. He calls other pastors ministers of vaccines. He says, you know, the power of the world can make you a healer, Right? Well, if the power of the world can make uh, somebody a healer, yes, I mean, many Christians uh, believe that. He says, where is your faith? But I'm surprised that Pastor Chris Oyakilome is here to go to the Yaba Infectious Diseases Hospitals to prove his point. And this is the whole thing. When you make claims, prove it. Let us see it. But the good news here, of course, is that for members of his congregation that we told at that time to beware, 
Ofcom and other groups now have exposed that what was being parroted from the uh, pulpit was just sheer ignorance. The same kind of ignorance uh, that uh, uh, led uh, uh, President John Magufuli of uh, Tanzania uh, to his uh, deathbed. The same kind of ignorance that affected uh, President uh, uh, Pierre Nkrumziza of uh, Burundi, who died of COVID-19. So I think it's important that we continue to stress the point that people, yes, ha yet, yes have the right to hold to certain beliefs, but they should be aware what kind of message they take from some of these pastors. But I would like to commend the other pastors who have been progressive, yes, who have shown uh, common sense. Yes. There's one pastor recently that was reported, uh, a pharmacist. He went and took the COVID vaccine and he took a picture and he circulated it to say, look, I'm a pastor. But no, I've so taken the vaccine. That, that's the question now that I'll have for you, uh, Tundu. It's about this idea of where is your faith? That one video that was circulating over the weekend, he was asking the pastors, where is your faith? I mean, how do you even um, measure that? Well, that tends to happen a lot in Christianity. You know, with Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't accept blood transfusions. A lot of people feel that they can pray away their illnesses and they would rather call on God than call on a doctor. But even Jesus Christ himself said, you know, doctors come for the sick, talking about himself. So even he admits the role of medicine. But let me not digress. Um, um, Pastor Chris, Christ Embassy has something called the Healing School. And okay. I took a look at their website as a result of this story. And there was claims posted there of healing a fractured leg, healing a neurological disorder, but nothing about healing COVID-19. Whereas we all know where all of those um, isolation centers are. Could he not have gone there and really just displayed what his healing school can do? And he's talking about how um, are you ministers of vaccines and what have you. Yes, yes. The yes. vaccine is not an idol. It's merely a tool and a very important tool. So I think he's been somewhat melodramatic questioning people's faith in this manner. It's not really his place to do that. That authority belongs to God and not to him. I would be a lot more convinced if he would go preferably without PPE into isolation centers. Preferably. And yes. Say that that to <laughs> yes, let's see. Because he's the repository of the word of God. Yes. Let's see. And it is very unfair for people in power like that to mislead the, their crowd. It, I think it is unfair. really unfair. And, well, I hope that this fine, in a way, would, you know, help him curb the information or misinformation he goes about spreading uh, uh, on this uh, virus. And I think it is important that we continue to talk about this uh, um, misinformation. Well, I don't know if we can take another story before we go on a short break. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll take right, the break. We'll take a short break now. And when we come back, what's trending on The Morning Show will continue. <laughs> Welcome back to The Morning Show. We're still on what's trending. We'll take another story. The Lagos State Governor, Babajire Songwulu, on Wednesday, unveiled body one cameras for security agencies in the effort to enhance security and safety in the state. The governor, during the unveiling ceremony, said the use of the cameras would improve transparency and accountability in the activities of law enforcement agency. In a tweet, he wrote that the devices would also help to put the state government in a better position to respond to security challenges in real time. Well, here is a clip of the governor's demonstration of the body cam. So we can we can be proactive, proactive to anything that is happening. He's recording over there. Yes, sir. He's recording over with on you and he's recording over there as well. And we can split the camera and we can split the monitor into the numbers of the law enforcement officer that we want to monitor. Rafai, I think this is such a wonderful initiative. I just hope that it will be enforced. Yeah, this is such a wonderful initiative. Kudos to them. But I have many loopholes to pluck. Number one, how would you charge that body cam? Have you gone to a police station recently to do anything? To get a police Well, report? I'm sure that there are all those measures that have been put in place I, before they uh, ordered it. Number that. one, sure. uh, I would like to see those measures being put in place. Two, I'd like to see effective training of the officers that will use it. Three, how can you assure me that videos from body cam will not be doctored when it comes to giving out evidence? That's another thing. 
because you will get this video from Bodycan. Is there like an independent cloud storage that will take all the videos that you're recording from there at any point in time? Because you can actually delete out the part and give an evidence that you don't want people to see that has gone against you. Yeah, those are all valid Because we've questions. seen yeah. body cams being used in other parts of the world. Yes. And how some people don't come clean with the body cams. It's a good measure. It's a good initiative. But the problem that is always on ground is the institutional trust. Is the institutional trust. A lot of people will say, oh, it's only when people do things against the police they'll use this to film it down. How is it going to be kept safe? We've seen the way things have been damaged before in the past. Let's see how it works. I would like to see how it works. Because if it truly does the job it's meant to do, it will be win-win for all of us. Absolutely, Rufai. Well said. <clears throat> well, I'd like to give two quick examples with regard to uh, body cameras. You recall in the uh, trial of those police officers who killed uh, George Floyd, who put the knee yes. on his uh, neck. Now, body cameras became very important when, uh, you know, evidence was being taken. And the body camera that was presented in court uh, showed that uh, the man was actually brutalized, that George Floyd was brutalized. Second, that he was pleading, please, please, mama, mama, mama. Now, that's in the United States. So in a very good environment where things work, you can use the body camera to collect evidence because it would uh, record the uh, person and also the uh, police officer. So there will be transparency, there will be accountability, and in the case of a prosecution, uh, there will be a very good uh, data to be provided. The second example is from South Africa. Two days ago, the Deputy Minister of uh, Transport in uh, South Africa, as part of the Easter Safety Program, uh, introduced body cameras for police officers in South Africa and that these police officers were going to be using these body cameras for the next five years. But in this case, for traffic matters, for traffic offenses, and they were also going to deploy, uh, uh, what do you call it, drones, uh, drone surveillance. That's in South Africa. Now, here in Nigeria, we have here uh, the Lagos State Government also talking about uh, body cameras for our policemen. Yes, we've talked about transparency and accountability, but the question to ask is, Will body cameras affect the behavior of policemen? Because if you have a body camera that can record you and record what is going on, them, yes, maybe that will become yes. a disincentive for corruption. If you know that, you know, if you collect bribe, it will be recorded. Absolutely. Now, how would that work out? Because having a camera, a body camera is one thing. How about the integrity of the policeman that is wearing that body camera? And if we go by the reputation of uh, Nigerian policemen, uh, they can tamper with it. If they are asked to provide it in, uh, in court, they may, they, may say, they may say it's been uh, de deleted. They may say something has happened to it. So these are the issues, the right. integrity of it, of the wearer, and also how uh, it is handled. But as for the objectives of deepening security work, of uh, ensuring uh, transparency and accountability, that will help. I used to be, I was a pioneer member of the Lagos State Security Trust Fund. And, you know, that board uh, at that time, part of our program was to provide equipment to ensure security, particularly in Lagos State. And I'm sure that, you know, this is like to be, to, to be part of that effort by the Lagos State government to further secure the lives and properties of Lagos residents. Yeah, right. To that extent, it's commendable. But the challenges are obvious. Yeah, Tindu. Well, you've made all my points now. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, really. But what I will add is that if there's any incident of tampering or simply refusing to switch on the camera at the opportune moment, because that has happened, I recall in Australia, there was a case of policemen just refusing to switch on the camera. I mean, completely negating the point of that. Those officers should be sanctioned as if the worst possible outcome had occurred. Because really, what are you trying to hide? Yeah. But our director is trying to communicate to the, us. Well, these are the security um, agencies that are going to be using the body cameras right. at this point. So you I think, identify yes, this is all great work from point. Lagos State. And it's right. important to be responsive. What the people want is accountability. We want transparency. And this is the state government listening to that and trying to provide that. I think he's such a proactive governor. Yes, That's this all. is, we have to this give is it really to commendable. Yes.
but just don't switch it off like those Aussies did. <laughs> if they do, they should have the book thrown at them because if you're switching off your body cam, you have something to hide. Absolutely. Shall we take our final story with reactions trailing the U.S. Department of State report claiming that it cannot confirm the accuracy figure of casualties from last October's Lekki Tollgate shooting in Lagos during the NSAS protest against police brutality. While Nigerians have shared mixed reactions, we'll take one tweet from a Fola Jimmy Oluremi, who wrote, we have our own judicial panel on Lekki killings. And yet, a report is saying the evidence are not verifiable. The bad implication is that we shouldn't expect much from our own investigation. Why do foreign nations always undermine us? I mean, this has been going around uh, social media, but I think the big picture really is the fact that um, at the, when they were conducting their investigation, the Nigerian government could not provide them the, um, ac well, the correct investigation for them to have that accurate uh, report um, at this point, Tundu. This is what we're saying about transparency. Yes. It's actually embarrassing yes. that such a tragedy happened in this country and we do not have the facts and figures till date. Right. Since 20th of October, we're still here with hypothesis. It's, it's really unacceptable. Yes, well, although the army has said you know, that nobody has been injured at this point. And Amnesty uh, International is still reporting and is still insisting that 10 people were injured. I believe that we have discussed this um, Yes, at we length. discussed this earlier uh, yeah. and the yes. concern that has been expressed by the U.S. Department of State with regard to uh, killings, human rights abuses, extrajudicial killings, you know, uh, problems with our prisons, either in terms of congestion and how the uh, Nigerian government has been uh, remiss uh, in addressing all of these uh, challenges. Now, that particular Lekki incident, of course, you know, uh, has been addressed by the uh, panel of inquiry uh, here in Lagos, uh, uh, just to address it. But the expectation of Nigerians is that there will be full disclosure and I will be able to get the truth. Right. And we hope that by the time that judicial panel of inquiry uh, closes its work, you know, ends its work, uh, we'll be able to have some kind of truth, right. you know, beyond the alternative narratives uh, that we seem to be getting from well, the affected Before we wrap, I just wanted to say, Tundu and I are getting married, are we? <laughs> <laughs> Please invite it, me. Did I say that? Well, there's the one social media picture that I've been going around. Is it true, Tundu? Are we getting married? We don't share public, <laughs> private information. In public. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> well, Ujineka. it's April Fool's. Uh, Rufai, well, I'm getting married. Uh, I'm getting married. <laughs> yes. Can we have Congratu the picture? If congratulations. We can. Uh, we've well, got to, we've got to go. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.